Hello and welcome to my channel, the place where I take you on RV tours, campground tours, and hiking destinations. Now today I am at John Dickinson State Park located in Hope Sound, Florida. This state park offers two campgrounds. There's the Pine Grove Campground which has full hookups and then there's the River Campground which has electric and water hookup. This state park has so many activities to offer. There's lots of trails. You can hike on them. You can bike on them. There's even mountain biking. There's horseback riding. There's canoeing, kayaking. You can even rent a motorboat. There's just so much to do at this state park. There's even a lot to do in the surrounding areas outside of the park. There's many beautiful beaches you can visit and lots of sights to see. So let's get to it. Welcome to my campsite. I'm at the Pine Grove Campground and this is site number 75. And as you can see, it's all nice and level with a gravel bottom. I've got plenty of shade and there's some foliage giving me some privacy from my neighbors. So this site has full hookups. So I've got water, electric, and sewer. There's also a picnic table, a fire pit, a nice big clothesline, and a grill. All right, let me show you around. Now the closest bathroom is actually right beside the site. And it's just down this short path. Let's check them out. So there's laundry facility right here, washer, dryer, coin operated. Let's check out the bathroom. So there are three bathroom stalls, two sinks, and a nice big shower, handicap accessible, and another shower right here. Nice and big and clean. Even provides you with a bench for a changing area. Hello. Good morning, oh, how cute. Good morning. Good morning. There's even a family bathroom right here. Toilet, sink, and a big shower area. All nice and clean and well kept. I'm at the beginning of the path to the Hope Mountain Observation Tower. It rises 86 feet above sea level, making it the highest point of land in all of South Florida. So it's a 10 minute walk up to the top of the Hobe Mountain Observation Tower and it gives you a view of the Atlantic Ocean, the Intracoastal Waterway, and the entire expanse of the park. So let's head on up. Now that's where we're headed, to the top of the Observation Tower. This is it, I've made it to the tower. Now I'm gonna take the steps on up. So this is the top of the observation tower. I've made it to the top and take a look at all the views. There's the intracoastal waterway right there in front with boats going by and beyond that is the Atlantic Ocean. There's A1A right in front of the Intracoastal. And take a look at all the nature all around. Okay, so I turned my Apple Watch on on the way back down. So it's really only about 0.13 of a mile one way. And it took me three minutes and 37 seconds to do that one way back down. And I did stop to take a look at that lizard. So I had a great time. 
Mountain biking is a very popular activity here. Here is a map of the Camp Murphy off-road bicycle trail system. So right here you're seeing a skills practice park. You get to practice your mountain biking skills before heading out on the trails. There's even a little maintenance area with various tools for working on your bike if needed and some air available. And there's a bike washing station over there. This is the trailhead for mountain biking. Green is for novices, blue is for intermediate, and the black diamond is for experts. So this is the kayak and canoe launch and it is really busy here. You can bring your own or you can rent some. You can even rent some power boats. This is the concession where you can rent bikes, canoes, kayaks, power boats, and grab a quick bite to eat. There's even a nice outdoor eating area. Let's take a look inside. I decided to rent a motorboat at the concession stand and travel the three miles up the Loxahatchee River to the Trapper Nelson interpretive site, which is only accessible by water. Here's a map of the river, and the highlighted route is the direction to take in order to avoid dead ends and shallow water. Be sure to bring your binoculars because there are lots of birds and wildlife to be seen. I decided to take a small detour and take a look at the rock dam listed on the map. On an overcast morning, the river has a very mystical and surreal feel to it. So I just pulled into the Trapper Nelson interpretive site and this place looks ancient. It's got a really nice rustic old world feel. Looks a little rickety. The board is a little unstable there. But you know what, for the most part, the rest of it is pretty stable, surprisingly enough. Check out the bamboo over there. That has been growing for quite some time. So let's check out the area. Check out that bamboo over there. Massive, look at this. Never seen bamboo so tall. Okay, so the history of this place is that in the early 1930s, Trapper Nelson came to this area and found it full of wildlife. For decades, he lived off the land, supplementing his diet of raccoon, gopher, tortoise, opossum with fruit from his citrus grove. And in addition to trapping, he made his living by developing a business that he called Trapper Zoo and jungle garden. 
His docks, cages, cabins, and shelters were handmade from pine trees. While he lived here, Trapper introduced hundreds of tourists and local visitors to the river's mystery and beauty, building the image of Eden in South Florida. Trapper Nelson lived in his camp until his mysterious death in 1968. The Trapper Nelson interpretive site is a rare survivor of a formerly common building type, exemplary of a vanished occupation and lifestyle, enhanced by its location in equally rare, pristine woodland. Let's go check it all out. Here is a map of the Trapper Nelson interpretive site. So this is the Chicky Shelter. Looks like cooking areas, benches, tables. This is the old water tower. And right across is Trapper's last cabin. Pretty rustic looking. Let's check it out inside. There's some animal pelts on the wall. Big alligator mouth mounted there. So this is what looks like the kitchen area. Check out the old stove. Little kitchen cabinet, counter, old cookware. Sink area. Bathroom over there. Check out the old fireplace. Here's a fun piece of history. Park rangers were restoring this fireplace and found a total of $1,829.46 within this fireplace. And here's a picture of the coins that they found totaling that amount. Right back there is what it looks like where it was found. So this would be the dining area. Neat little stools. And the room back here is the bedroom. Right here is the guest cabin. And on the side here, it looks like they were keeping a hurricane log. And it looks like 1949, the hurricane got three stars. So it must have been maybe a category three or pretty severe one. Let's check out inside. So I'm entering into what looks like a bedroom. couple of some bunks there, a bunk bed, old desk, and a full queen size. So this would be the main living area. Looks like there's a sink for the kitchen in that corner, cabinet, and a really old-fashioned ice box. It's pretty big. Dining room table. 
and a bathroom. I just noticed those gourds hanging from this tree. It even has a nice big air plant on the side. How interesting. Pretty neat. This is the Jeep shelter. So this was Trapper Nelson's Jeep. Pretty nice. It's a little step area so you can take a look inside. So I'm entering the zoo area. So this is where alligators were kept. Another pen here. Back here is where the wildcats were. He's put hollowed out logs in there so the cats could be all nice and nestled inside. Right beside it, this is where the raccoons were kept. Again, they had some nice hollowed out logs. Over here, it looks like it was a snake pit. So there's even some restrooms here. They're actually public restrooms. <laughs> They're functioning and take a look inside. <laughs> All right, so here is a 360 degree view of Trapper Nelson's interpretive site. You can pack a lunch and enjoy the peacefulness before heading on back. Great way to visit a piece of history no crowds, nice and quiet, and we're pretty much the only ones here. This is my first time driving a skiff, and it's a pretty windy river. So, a little bit difficult, but not too bad. Turned out to be a beautiful day out here. You really only need about the 
two hours to make it to the Trapper Nelson interpretive site and back, along with taking in all the sights and doing a little bird watching. Saw lots of wildlife. And I'm gonna head on in now. Thank you. How was it? It was great. So that was an enjoyable ride down the river. Ah, great day. Take a look at that lizard. He's got a black tipped tail with red right in front and white in front of the red. Quite a colorful little body there. There is a little swim area here at the state park. Now there is no lifeguard on duty and there are underwater hazards present. It's just a little swim area that has been roped off. This is the Kimball Visitor Center. Let's take a look. Here visitors can discover the wildlife that can be seen throughout the area. You can learn about the park's natural and cultural resources such as the Loxahatchee River through interactive and informational displays and you can also learn about Florida's history. There's even some artwork and miscellaneous items available for purchase. Here's a look at some of the sites in the Pine Grove Campground. This campground is located near the ranger station offers full hookups and provides some privacy from your neighbors. Here's a quick look at a few sites in the river campground. The sites here offer less privacy from your neighbors, however it is located closer to the concession and river access. There are 11 cabins available for rent, located near the Loxahatchee River. All of these cabins are furnished and supplied with bed and bath linens, as well as dinnerware and utensils. Here's a look at the inside of one of the cabins. Be careful as you're driving through the park because you can encounter some wildlife in the road. All right, he's got somewhere to go. So if you feel like having some beach time, I'm here at Coral Cove Park, located three miles from Jonathan Dickinson State Park. Just check out this area. It's just beautiful out here. Lots of big waves, big coral rocks, surfers out in the distance, just beautiful. Rocks Preserve right now. It is about four miles from John Dickinson State Park. Now this beach has a rocky shoreline and when it's high tide the seas are so rough that it pushes the seawater up through holes in the rock area. Sometimes they shoot up as high as 50 feet. It can be quite impressive.
path in and out to the beach here at Blowing Rocks Preserve has this nice shaded path with benches along the way. At the end of your day at the beach, there are showers available for you. I am now at the Jupiter Inlet Lighthouse and I'm going to head on up to the lighthouse. But first I have to purchase some tickets and those are available at the gift shop. So let's head on in. Look how high up the lighthouse is. So there's a path that leads up to the entrance to the lighthouse and then you climb up when you're in the lighthouse also. So let's head on up. Check out this tree. Wow. They've built this whole deck area around it so you can enjoy it. It's quite majestic. So the climb to the lighthouse is about to begin. You have 34 steps to start with here, the grey steps that are going up to our lighthouse. The entrance is uh, on the left, on the base of the lighthouse. And there is 105 wrought iron stairs inside the stair, inside staircase that so winds up towards the top of your lighthouse. There is a handle on the right. Every 25 steps or so, there's a small landing that you can step to the side and take a breather, turn around and let people pass if anybody wants to go faster or if anybody's coming down towards you. As you come towards the top of the lighthouse, there's going to be, it's going to be considerably narrower and there's going to be beams going across and some equipment from the lighthouse, etc. And the exit onto the viewing platform is also very narrow and small. Our colleague John is up there for your safety, for your information, ask him questions, he'll tell you about the surrounding area, about the lighthouse itself and the, more about the history of the site if you're interested. It's not windy at all today down here, but up at the top of the lighthouse it's always windy, so please be careful you don't lose hats, sunglasses, pieces of paper, your phones, stuff like that over the edge of the lighthouse because we cannot retrieve it. Okay. Alright, time to head on up. So I made it to the top. Great views all around. Lots of water views. and breezy up here. Here's a map of the lighthouse area. In addition to climbing the lighthouse, you can tour the lighthouse grounds while leisurely strolling through the nature trails. Exhibits include the Tyndall Pioneer Homestead, an early Native American shell mound, Seminole Chicky, and Lighthouse Keeper's Workshop. You can also visit the museum once it reopens. Driving back to the campground, I noticed this little souvenir shop 
So I am going to go check it out. It's called Sea Treasures. This store is packed with a variety of great items. You can find many different souvenirs, a ton of shells, and items made from shells such as wind chimes. There's towels, beachwear, tropical clothing, stuffed animals, playing cards, and my personal favorite, Christmas ornaments. It's always great to come back to the campsite to cook and enjoy some campfire food. I had such a fun-filled and eventful day that I worked up quite an appetite. On the menu for tonight is Swiss mushroom burgers cooked on the open campfire with hickory wood. Turned out nice and juicy. Give it a try. Mm. Really good. So my time here at Jonathan Dickinson State Park is up. I'm on my way out, but I had a great time here. There was so much to do. I love that you can easily rent kayaks and canoes and even motorboats. I loved going out there on the skiff and visiting that. Trapper Nelson's interpretive site, which is only accessible by water. It was quite a unique experience. Loved heading on up to that Hope Observation Tower. Another unique experience. Also love that you can just get to many different areas right outside of the park. Within three or four miles, you're at a beach. You can visit the lighthouse. Great experiences all around. So thank you so much for joining me today. Please subscribe to my channel and join me for lots more videos. Bye for now.